everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here uh, for our morning devotional. As we continue to say and always will say that we are thankful that we have a God seated on the throne, exalted above all and in control of all things. And that is how we start our day. That's how we live our lives, realizing that this life really isn't our own, that these things that we 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 pursue are from God and that, and that the word that we have before us is what guides us and leads us. And and we've been talking this week about standing firm in our faith. Um, and I know yesterday, I think I messed up what day it was. I don't know what I was thinking. But but the thing is, as we think about the the word of God, the importance of the word of God, and, and, and how it aids us in standing firm in our faith in Jesus Christ. We have to, we have to anchor our lives on something. And it can't just be some wishy-washy, kind of maybe halfway convicted type thing. No, we have to rest upon the surety and authority of the Word of God. Now, this morning as we uh, open our Bibles, we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 5, starting in verse 6. Now, we're going to kind of start here and work our way through, but really focus on verse 9. But as we read this morning, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore. Under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by all your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. I love this passage. When I came across it as I was prepping for this morning's devotion, I was just amazed at how, how powerful this passage is for the life of the believer. Because he starts by saying, humble yourself. This is the, the, the quintessential element of understanding who we are in relationship to a holy and perfect God. We are literally the product of his grace and his mercy. We, we are sinners been re, who have been redeemed by faith in Jesus Christ. We are broken people who have been restored. In the grand scheme of things, before a holy God, we stand unworthy and only made worthy by the blood of Christ to stand before him at all. You see, humble yourselves. Have a right understanding of who you are in relationship to the God that we serve. He is not there to pander to our needs. He is not a magic genie that we rub and he comes out. He is the holy, almighty, omniscient, all-powerful, never-changing, eternal God seated on the throne. And we have to humble ourselves under his hand, under his authority over our lives. So many times we as believers wake up in the morning and we go, you know what, here's my plans, here's what I'm going to do, this is my life, I'm going to live it the way I want to. And we don't ever stop to consider and say, God, what is it that you want from me today? God, what is it that you desire for my life? God, what is it that, that I'm putting in front of you and before you, realizing I'm exalting myself and not letting you exalt me in due time? You see, he says, humble yourselves and let God at the proper time exalt you. Let me just tell you what, we humble ourselves before God. We walk in humility, knowing who we are in relationship to who he is. And at the proper time, he's going to exalt us. He's going to take us home to be with him in glory. He's going to give us a new glorified body. We're going to be with him and be like as he is. And so he says, if that's the case, and we humble ourselves under the authority of God, why do you carry your cares and anxieties? Why don't you cast them upon him? Because he cares for you. But then the challenge comes. So we humble ourselves under the authority of God. We cast our cares and our anxieties on him. And then he says, be sober-minded. Have clarity of mind. Think clearly. Be on watch. Be watchful. Because we have an enemy, the devil, our adversary, who prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You see, our adversary wants nothing good for us. He wants to destroy us. He wants to take what God has given us and diminish it in our lives. He wants to take the, uh, the life that God de desires and, and replace it with things that are temporal and fleeting and sinful and don't really matter. And so he whispers these temptations in our ears, sometimes boldly and blatantly putting them right before us. And the call here is to be watchful, be sober-minded, because the devil is seeking to destroy us. And then he says in verse 9, resist him. This is kind of what we talked about 
yesterday. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist him. But how do we resist the devil? This is, this is the thing that I loved about this passage this morning. How do we resist temptation? How do we resist the, the, the plans and schemes of the devil? How do we resist the, the deception that he's putting before us that this is good? By being firm in your faith. Anchored to the word of God, sure of what you hope for, certain of what you do not see. That is how we as believers resist the devil. We stand firm in our faith. We stand firm in our convictions. We stand firm in what the Bible teaches us. That's what we have to do. We have to, uh, to, to stand firm in our faith. Why? Now, I'm sorry, I, I'm getting pretty excited because I, I'm excited to, to teach you this this morning. But we resist him firm in our faith, knowing this. That we're not alone. You see, what Satan loves to do is he loves to isolate us. He loves to, to, to break us off from the church. He loves to, to break us off and make us feel like we're the only one who's being tempted this way. We're the only one that's struggling with this sin. We're the only one. And he, and he isolates us. And when he does that, it's a lot harder for us to resist him. Because once he has us isolated, he just starts bombarding us from every direction. To the point where we just say, well, forget it. I'm just going to give in. It's easier to give in than to resist. But he says, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. He says, you're not in this alone. Our brothers and sisters in Christ are going through the same thing every single day. They need to resist, stand firm in their faith. So do you. And we do it together, collectively, knowing full well that we're not alone. That our brothers and sisters are there in this fight with us. That we have the church to fall back on. And not only that, we have the Spirit of God residing within us. The life of Christ that's been given to us. And he says, don't worry, we resist him. Standing firm in our faith. In verse 10, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, and establish you. Love, love, love that verse. You see, we, res we humble ourselves, we resist the devil, we stand firm in our faith, and we do it trusting God and leaving the consequences of our faith to him. And it says in verse 10, and after you have suffered a little while, after this life is done and gone, after we have, we have suffered, and James says our life is but a vapor, after you suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. You see, we let God have his way in our lives. We submit ourselves to the authority of his word and the authority of his throne. And we humble ourselves, resisting the devil, standing firm in our faith, and we trust God to do what God's going to do best. I hope that's a challenge for you this morning. I hope that it, it hits you right where you're at as it did me as I studied and prepped for this. Now, as we continue to pray this week, uh, we've prayed for our government leaders. We've prayed for, for the church as it begins to reopen. And today I want to uh, just to, to challenge us to pray for the ministry and outreach of the gospel. Uh, as I've watched the, the, the events of, of the world unfold, as I've seen uh, so many people handle situations and circumstances differently. Uh, the thing that keeps coming up and the theme that keeps reoccurring is that this world needs Jesus Christ. And if the world is going to get Jesus Christ, it has to come through the gospel and the preaching of the gospel. Paul wrote, the preach, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see, if you guys go to Romans chapter 10, and for sake of time, we won't this morning, but you can go to chapter 10 and you can read in chapter 10 where it says literally that, that, that how can people hear unless they're told and how can people, uh, or unless they're preached to and how can people preach unless they're sent? And, and, and the reality is, is the gospel is designed to be proclaimed by the followers of Jesus Christ as good news to those who need to hear it. So will you pray that the church would be bold and courageous in their gospel witness, that they would be willing to stand up and say, uh, that Jesus loves you and Jesus died for you because you're a sinner and you need uh, salvation. And I, I believe if we stand up and do that, that God will bless that immensely. So thank you guys for watching. We hope you guys have a great day. Uh, take care and God bless. We'll see you tomorrow morning.